Welcome to BaseballGuys.com. I'm your host on Run the Horns, Ray Flowers. Gordon Beckham. Yeah, that's a name we've been hearing for, for, for about for a long time. 2008 first round draft pick. Quickly got to the big leagues. Had a great half season as a rookie. And ever since has really, really struggled. Now he does have a career high 15 home runs this season. He's batting 325 with three home runs in September. So if you're looking for a middle infield boost in the final month of the season, he's probably a good guy to take a look at. I'm sure he's on waivers in a lot of leagues. At the same time, he's hitting under 250 on the year, and his on base is under 300. It's at 297, which is just awful. You don't need me to tell you that. Now, he doesn't have tremendous power. As I mentioned, the 15 home runs are career high. He doesn't steal bases. He, he's probably good for five most of the time. So he needs to get on base and produce in that batting average category. 246 career batting average, 313 career on base percentage. That is just not going to get it done, folks. Not showing much signs of improvement or taking the next step, but he is just 26 years old. He's still young enough that he can perform a little bit better, but at this point, not a lot going on, even though he's been hot in September. So Gordon Beckham. Rob Brantley has been very, very hot. Now, he had 365 in 14 games with the Marlins at AAA. Called up the big, uh, you know, they've got nothing going on there, but I mean, come on. That's not doing much there. <laughs> at the catch position, the team's turning to Brantley here, who will be a strong second catching option for the rest of the season. He's got an eight game hitting streak right now. Since being called up to the big leagues with the Marlins, Brantley is hitting 343 with a 443 on base percentage, and he's also tossed in a 552 slugging percentage for good luck there. He's shown the ability in the minor leagues to be a strong producer in the batting average category. Not a lot of power, but he is definitely someone who's surging, someone who's hot, and someone who makes a solid depth play in two catcher leagues. Chase Hudley. I mean, excuse me, Chase Utley, not Chase Utley, who's having a great season at third base, Forty and slip here, because we're talking about Chase Utley potentially playing third base for the Phillies. Now, Placido Polanco is pretty much done as an everyday player at the big league level. We all know that. Uh, the Phillies have Freddy Galvis. They think he play a solid second base. So they're going to try, probably, not certain, but probably, Utley at third base this season. He's been taking work there uh, in practice, seeing if he can handle the transition. Not enough games played, obviously, this season uh, for him to get 20 to be eligible next, next year at third base, even if the team decides to make a change there. But at least should see a game or two, if not a handful, at third base this year. If they deem him to be successful there, they might move him to third base in 2013, which obviously would enhance his value as a second and third base eligible player for the Phillies. Now, another Phillies player who is just killing it. He's been killing it for most of the season, quite frankly. And he's six and seven on the year. You know who I'm talking about, and that's Cliff Lee. Over his last seven starts, his ERA under two, his WHIP under one, his strikeout rate 9.8 to nine innings. He has been absolutely perfect, on fire, on point. However you want to say it, he hasn't been perfect. Wrong word there, but he's been on point the last seven starts, and this really isn't a surprise. Again, on the season, a 3.27 ERA, a 1.13 WHIP. And a strikeout an inning, and he is six and seven. And as a Cliff Lee owner in uh, in Tout Wars in the mixed Tout Wars league, I can attest to the fact that he has killed me. If he had 13, 14 wins, which would be totally supported by his numbers, not to mention his recent history, I literally would gain three spots in the standings in my league just off of that. Uh, Cliff Lee, where have the wins been? Actually, it's not your fault, Cliff. Blame your teammates on that one. Martin Prado has been very hot the last 10 games for the Braves. He's got 17 hits in those last 10 games, raising his batting average to 303. A career 296 hitter, not at all odd to see him hitting through throughout the season. Nine home runs, 66 RBI, 76 runs scored. All of those numbers, what you should expect from Martin Prado. The bonus you've gotten from him this year is the 17 steals. That's very impressive work for Prado, who qualifies at third base and outfield in all leagues. It should also be noted, he's played nine games at shortstop as well. I don't know what your league rules are for in-season, but a lot of leagues have five games played at that position. If so, you've got Prado now as a shortstop eligible player for the final couple weeks of the season. Another added boost for the solid, solid hitter of the Atlanta Braves. Nate McLeod, solid, solid hitter. Yeah, you probably wouldn't think so coming into the season, or for the first half of the season for that matter. But of late, that is exactly what he has been for the Baltimore Orioles, who, by the way, are a half game behind the New York Yankees in the AL East. Amazing as that is. 40 games played for McLeod with the Orioles. He's hitting 274. He's stolen eight bags, scored 26 runs, 
He's performed very well. Of late, the last 10 games, a couple of steals, a couple of home runs, uh, scored eight times. He has been a very impressive fifth outfielder option in mixed leagues. I know it's hard to say, but it's true. He's been a very solid fit there. And in AL only leagues, wow, has he provided quite the boost, totally under the radar for the Orioles. Under the radar, yeah, maybe that's Kevin Correa. Goes out seven shutout innings after a lengthy rain delay on Monday night. He's now 2-1 and one, uh, in the month of September. His ERA is under 2, his whip is under 1. Very, very strong work the last couple of times on the hill. Uh, Correa, his last 13 appearances, has an ERA of 373, a whip of 128. You know, that's basically what you get with Kevin Correa. He's not going to strike a lot of guys out. He's probably not going to win a lot of games, but he'll keep his team in the game. He's been doing that in the second half of the season, and he's really looking pretty promising the last three or four times he's taken a hill. And then finally, the case of Ike Davis. Now, Ike Davis, he's got 27 home runs and 81 RBI. Very impressive season when it comes to power numbers at first base, but he's hitting in the 220s. Terrible. His OPS is not even 750. His on-base percentage is 302, folks. He's just not getting it done as a complete hitter. Now, there's a report out of ESPN New York that says the Mets might consider trading Ike Davis, thinking that Lucas Duda may not have the upside in the power department, but to be just as effective a performer, thinking that Ike Davis has more value on the trade market. Now, there's a couple of things dealing uh, with Ike Davis here that might lower his value. The Mets believe that he just simply hasn't taken to their coaching, that there are issues with him that need to be resolved. I can speak firsthand to that. He's got a very long swing. He's got a hand hitch. He needs to tighten that up, but that batting average is never coming up. In fact, I have said that from seeing him in the Arizona Fall League years ago. Years ago. The power is evident, and it's impressive. But he's got a loop and a hole in his swing, and until he cuts that down, he's not going to improve his play. So apparently he's not taking the coaching that's in the bike. There's also some questions about whether or not he stays out too late. Okay, no one's accusing him of being a drunkard or anything like that, but apparently he enjoys the nightlife a little bit. There's some concern that New York may not be the best place for someone that wants to do that. Will Ike Davis be dealt? We'll have to wait and see. But as I noted, while the power is legit, he looks an awful lot like a Carlos Pena, Adam Dunn type of hitter right now until he makes some adjustments with that way. I'm Ray Flowers, SpacebookGuys.com. Thanks for joining me on Around the Horn. Talk to you all again soon.